Like most people, I once thought of memory as a very stable process where you take information and put it into your brain and then you use that information uh, the next time you need it. But the experiments we did in late 1990s and published in 2000 sort of opened up a whole new wave of research. Uh, it certainly blew me away when we made the discoveries at that time, uh, showing that each time you take a memory out, uh, it's subject to change. And this is part of what's called reconsolidation. The updating of memory, the changing of memory. A memory is brought back to an active state, and once that happens, uh, the memory has to be put back into the brain and restored in order for it to be used again in the future in the same way. But it also can be a bad thing when a person, for example, with post-traumatic stress disorder is reconsolidating a memory over and over again, making it stronger and stronger each time because the stress is so powerful each time that it's retrieved. The consolidation has been studied for many years now, more than 10 years. And there are other things we know about how the brain makes this reconsolidation process. But what we don't know are the exact conditions under which the memory is going to be changed in this way. And that's what the present experiment addressed. We modified the classical methods to study memory in, in, in rats. Normally you do a, you associate a tone and present a little shock. And so the animal learned the association uh, that the tone is going to predict the shock. In our situation, we used a much, a much longer uh, tone, 60 seconds tone. And the shock arrived in the middle of the tone. So the animal does not only learn that the tone predicts the shock, but also when the shock is going to arrive. The next day, we reactivated the memory by presenting the tone and the shock. But in this case, the shock arrives earlier. Instead of arriving at 30 seconds, now it arrives at 10 seconds. So this way, by uh, uh, having the shock arriving earlier, we force the animal to update their memory because there is something new and different. So immediately after we injected in the rat brain a drug that is known to erase memories and prevent reconsolidation. So the third day, we tested the, the, the memory of the, of the rat uh, uh, by presenting the tone alone. And so we expect that for the animal that remembered well that, that the tone predicts the arrival of the shock, uh, they would be afraid of the tone. And that's exactly what happened for the control groups that didn't receive the drug. But the group that received the drug showed less memory to the tone, showing that the memory was impaired. The amazing thing was that the rats that received the same drug but the time of arrival of the shock was not shifted, these rats didn't show any impairment of memory, showing that new information is necessary during reactivation in order to trigger reconsolidation. We showed that what triggers reconsolidation is actually when new information triggers the update of the old memory, but also that time is actually one of the most important elements of the association. So we now know that we have to add new information uh, uh, to the experience if we want that memory uh, to be changed. One, two, three. Yes! <laughs> My radio is playing a song I once knew, a song I used to whistle to.